Hey, it's Selena, and there's one thing that we all share in common that I'm a little bit obsessed with talking about, and that is our identities. Now, it's not always an easy journey, and I've come to learn to be comfortable talking about the uncomfortable. So here's a series of very honest and personal interviews with celebrities, activists, friends, even my neighbours, where we share all of our personal stories of how we've come to embrace our unique identities. Well, I guess you were stuck inside, weren't you? But like, you never saw any of the crew. Yeah, or you never literally saw anybody. When you're in the wow. house, you only kind of, unless you want to see uh, speak to someone like a psychiatrist because you're not coping. Um, so did you have that kind of help then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Always, always, if you really, really needed it, you could always say, look, I want to talk to um, the, the, the psychiatrist because it, it can fuck you up in, like, yeah. not in a bad way, but because you are so, like, you've got no communication with nobody you kind of your mind goes plays tricks on you and uh for me i weren't myself in there as such you know i was kind of i just weren't me and i wish i was but i weren't so you can talk to a psychiatrist but right. that is the only contact you would get from the outside world you wouldn't you wouldn't you'll get big brother in the diary room like you know if you've got a problem but other than that nah it's just you and the housemates and that is it yeah Dumb. so did you yeah. did you watch yourself back on big brother or not no no fucking chance of that i understand <laughs> more chance of eating my own poo but um <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't do it i couldn't do it because i knew that i i would cringe uh looking yeah. at me because it weren't, me, it weren't me you know and i look i look back now and i think well i've got no regrets but i wish i would have kind of done it differently you know be a bit be a bit more me you know a bit more crazy which i am Mm. um and i just weren't but hey you know what well, what do, why do you think that was i don't Were you thinking I, of it as like i'm on a tv show or it was very difficult i mean at first you you always notice the cameras because there's fucking so right. cameras in the room. and like it, it, you, you dare you got to be careful what you say because like if at one point you say something controversial or whatever it if may be it. yeah they've got that fucking camera right on you and you think <laughs> oh shit and then they're going to put that out to be broadcasted. And that can make you a, a villain, a hero, a dickhead, or whatever. So for me, I, I didn't come out of it bad, but I didn't come out of it good. It was kind of like that, sort of neutral. But I wish I would have been a bit more me and yeah. showed my, me a bit more rather than being boring and dull. Uh, well, not dull, because I had my moments, but I just weren't me, hum. I've got to yeah. be honest with myself. Like, X Factor for me... That was me. That's who I am, a showman, performer. Do you know what I mean? That's me. That wasn't scripted, huh? That was fucking... That was... Literally... How you got away? It was good, but I don't know how you got away with not singing most of the song and you still I... went through. <laughs> I uh, honestly... That were a song that I wanted to do. <laughs> the story was, I went in and sung what the, the producer said, look, do this song with somebody to love. And I belted with this song out, and then Simon put his hand up halfway sort of through or, the, or something like that. Um, and he stopped me, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. And then he looked at my list of songs. You get a list of songs, what you want to do. Right. And he said, you um, sing Dance to Me Tonight, Ollie Murs. And I went, oh, shit. I said, I said, I don't know it. He went, it's on your list. I said, I know, but I was going to do that in the arena rounds. So anyway, he said, just sing it anyway. I went, I don't know it. You just sing it anyway. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to make a complete tit of myself here. So I sung this song thinking, okay, I don't know it. What do I do? I'll just have a laugh a bit. And to my life, at first, Louis started laughing. I thought, yeah. okay, Louis laughing. Yeah, then, I saw Cheryl's face in the beginning as well. <laughs> then Mel started laughing. Then Cheryl started laughing. Then Simon pissed himself. And then that was it. And then the whole like crew in the whole room like um, the whole room the, the production crew were fucking increases because <laughs> it weren't scripted it was just me and they were laughing their heads off and then luckily for me i thought oh here we go i'm gonna get nose i got four yeses and i got to the next round so for me 
And the highlight of that for me, I'll tell you why. Simon Cowell said to me, he went, I like you. Yeah. I went, yeah. I went, oh my God. <laughs> I, like you. I like you too, Simon. <laughs> that was the best bit of that audition for me. When Simon said to me, I like you, I was like, I'm fucking happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if Simon likes you, honestly, you're on a winner. If, yeah, if you don't like you, oh my God, forget it. Forget yeah. it. So for me, uh, he likes crazy, nutty people. He likes the, the, the in-your-face, out-there kind of people. Because he, he, I don't know, he just loves nutty people. But when you're miserable, boring, he's like, he's like that, you know? Yeah, because he, he knows what people are going to want to watch, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, he's got his yeah. business on. He's thinking, oh, okay, what can we do with Stevie? All right. <laughs> we could do this to him. We can put him in an Egyptian outfit with fucking, like, you know, a syrup down him and feathers. Yeah. And feathers, you know, and I wouldn't say no. I'll go, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. You yeah. know, because I know people are going to laugh, be remembered by it, and people are going to go, oh, fucking hell, Steve Richie, do you remember when you've done that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's one of them. Yeah. So that was another thing. Be remembered. And I fucking yeah. was. Yeah, I was remembered. So. Like, once you, once you get there, obviously you're in the public eye. Did you find it hard when like fame I, well i don't know if you call it fame or not but when fame came into it was it a lot harder than what you would think because obviously a lot's happened with some celebrities and like i always think about caroline flack and like how horrible that was and no. it kind of makes you think is it like it must be there must be a side to it that we don't realize <sighs> Do you know what? You brought Caroline up, and uh, I met Caroline. I don't know her personally, but I met Caroline okay. um, during X Factor. I was in. I was doing. I was in um, the. I was watching it. Funny enough, it's 2015 when she was hosting, and uh, her and Ollie were doing it. And I, uh, I was in the audience with my ex fiance at the time, and they both said hello, like to us, you know. Mm. And I was like, uh, and Caroline, for me, even to, to this day, like hun. I can't believe she's gone. Like, for me, it's the most shocking celeb of, of all celebs that are passed, right? Even to this day, it, it kind of makes me kind of sad because yeah. that, that woman was stunning. She was beautiful. She was talented. She could sing. She could dance. She could present. She could act. She had the whole shebang, right? Like, literally a triple threat or, or, or just multi-talented, right? And then... Because of one fucking thing, right? And we all fuck up. Let's be honest. We all do. We all do things, say things we don't mean. And because of that one thing, the, the, the media and everyone it just like pounded her and, and it, it just got too much for her. And she killed herself. Yeah. And even to this day, I just like, and all she wanted to do is be loved, right? And we all want to be loved, Selena, right? And I said to myself, do you know what? If Caroline was a, I'm going to say this to you now, right? Exclusive. If Caroline was alive today, I would literally love to have took her out on a date. I would have, I would have gone, Caroline. We were same age, you know. I, I, I would treat you so good. I would treat you amazing, like a queen, and I would. And that happened. So even now, I'm like, oh, fucking Caroline, man. She's yeah. just so. To answer your question, sorry, Aunt, because I'm just like, it oh, is hard. Man. Like, yeah, it, just, even even. Like having watched her for so many years, even not knowing her personally, you still feel so much for her. Yeah. Like, but that's why, you know, because people that I talk to, they're like, "Are you sure you want to do presenting?" Because it is, it's one of them, but it's the most rewarding industry, but the most hardest. Um, and it is. I've I kind of had that moment. I do have moments where I'm like, "Oh man, you know, it, it, fame is kind of." I don't know, it has its ups and downs, hun, yeah. you know. Um, and you have to take the rough with the smooth, be thick skinned about it, if I'm honest. You do, because you can sometimes, but like, I don't get it as much now, but you, I used to get a lot of fucking horrible comments, you know. Right. Oh, he's this, he's that, he's, he, you know, oh, uh, you know, fucking you, you, don't, you don't deserve to be on the show and this, that, and the other. And what people don't realize is I trained as an actor many years ago before that. And a holiday camp entertainer. Um, I paid my dues, you know. I'd done a lot of stuff, 
you know, and uh, I got on the show and I was lucky enough. And I, yeah. I honestly I thank the universe and God above for that. But the fame thing can be kind of, it's a great thing, but also it can hurt as well. Yeah. So it's, 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 a, it's a, yeah, I, I have no regrets, hon. You know, I'm proud of myself of what I've, I've achieved. Um, and like I say, it's like winning the lottery, getting on the yeah. like, X Factor. At the time, 10 million viewers a week. 10 million people a week tuned in to watch it me. was big like everyone watched it which i'm so mm. surprised well i kind of saw it coming i'm not gonna lie but i am still surprised that it's it's kind of gonna a little bit downhill but like yeah but why do you think that is uh, yeah again i'm never not the show but if i'm completely honest i think it needs to bring back old school to where yeah. like, i would say so Back to the drawing board. Do you know what I mean, hon? So, back to the drawing board are basic, like, uh, like room auditions, uh, a balls to all, get to know the contestants, and also maybe add a little bit of kind of the fun factor back, you know, yeah. uh, because that it was missing that kind of thing. Like, Honey G was the last person to, <laughs> to be, the, you know, uh, like, and everyone took a piss out of her, but I'm not being funny. Everyone remembers her. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, you know, um, I can name all the acts, right? So let's let's go through them, right? All the novelty acts, as you call them, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, had, you had um Chico, you had Jedward, you Wagner. had <laughs> yeah, Wagner, who I love, by the way. You've had um yeah, Ryland, myself, Honey G, um, fucking who else? Johnny Robinson. But you take some people take this, not you, Han, but but you name you can still name them people and go. Oh yeah, the joke act that year. In actual fact, we've all made money out of it. Yeah. You know? So hey, I'm like I said, straight back to the beginning. Never buy the hand that feeds you because yeah. I'm, I'm never i never knock it. Never. I always will defend X Factor. Anyone slags it off, I'll say, look, no, it use your opinion, but X Factor for me changed my life for me and my daughter. Yeah. And it gave me opportunities, and I'm still performing to this day seven years on so come on yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's that. why i wanted to talk about it because i feel like it's so easy for people oh, fucking hell cars going past uh, <laughs> my shirt <up. laughs> um it's just so easy for people to like make assumptions of like what's going on they don't realize and i think maybe like unless you work in the tv industry you don't you know you get a different perspective but like if you're just watching stuff at home you don't realize how it all runs and like yeah obviously they're going to try and make jokes and make it entertaining for people but like, you're still dealing with actual people yeah. I, I don't understand why people then make like such horrible or like direct comments when they don't know the full story sometimes yeah no 100 percent. yeah yeah there's, there's always like two sides for every story yeah and the truth and everyone has a, has a journey. Everyone has a journey in their life. You don't know what anyone's going through. Yeah. You know, I don't know what you've been through, hon, for the for the life of Adam. You don't know what I've been through, you know? Um, so everyone's got that journey, that story, which not many people really know. Yeah. You know? And it is. It's one of them. It's like, you know, if you get to know. Like some people would like, uh, like oh, well, Stevie Richard, why do you want to fucking, you know, but you don't know me as a person. You might. Exactly, you might, yeah. You know, you might meet me and go, oh, do you know what? You're right, actually. You're quite a laugh. You're bantery. You're fun. But then if you don't know that side, people are like, oh, he's a fucking whatever. He's dickhead. He's this, that, and the other. Hey, listen, I'm used to it. I am I can deal with that. But you do know? you think you should have to get used to it, though? Like, <sighs> or do you like to just, like, accept it and kind of look the other way? Yeah, I just, I just, for me, I don't like negativity or drama in my life anymore. I'm done with that, hun. Like, you yeah. know, the only drama I want to be in is, is fucking EastEnders or like that. You know, I don't want to be... Does it get annoying? Like, honestly, when people say, oh, you're Stevie from X Factor. No. I, do you know what? I love it. I kind of... Yeah. I, I live for it. I, I love that kind of attention, being wanted, yeah. loved, you know. And when people go, oh, can I have a photo or, or can I have a selfie or what? I'm like, yeah. Well, what are you? What's like plans for you now? Then, like, what are you up to? What's so now at the moment? I'm kind of just um, getting my body looking kind of muscly. 
is with no steroids. Um, Maybe you could go on Love Island after. <laughs> who says I haven't replied already? Oh, there you go. Uh, but I'm 40, so they're not going to take a 40 year They can now. do a 40 as much. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if they do a, uh, like a fucking old Vogue one, I'll be there. Uh, <laughs> there's a thought. I could actually, if they do one, uh, I would actually get, apply for it and go, fuck it, I'm 40 years old, I'm single Pringle ready to mingle, I'm a dick ready to tingle, get me on. So, um, <laughs> so at the moment for me, just working out and <clears throat> working on the voice, um, um, doing a part-time job, I've got some gigs coming up, I've, um, I've been cast in a film as well, I won't meant to say, but I will. If things are, you know, slowly coming in, obviously we all want more, but things are coming in and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the gigs, you know, and I, I get back to do what I love, you know, so. Yeah, no, that sounds amazing. Are you allowed to say what type of movie it is? It is a kind of a thriller. That's what I'm going to say. Oh, um, okay. I'm like a kind of a villain geezer in it. So look out. Oh. Give a, give I, yeah, I love my thrillers and horrors. They better be good. Oh, you're lucky. It's one of those horrible ones. It's a British independent movie, so it's not a Hollywood uh, drain. Yeah, yeah. That, they're quite good at times. I'm happy with it. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I've am i got a part, you know. So for me, it's kind of going back to my old roots of acting where I did start out and pantos and stuff. So, you know, hey, it's all good. I'm happy with that. So I'll yeah. more follow, but that is kind of like an exclusive got part in a film. So there you go. Did you, yeah. did you grow up as a kid, like wanting to be a singer and stuff? Is that no. what you've always wanted to do? Literally, I wanted to be in the army when I was a kid. I, oh. wanted, I was like, I want to join the army and, and you know, I, I own loads of guns and stuff like that. I was crazy, man. And, <laughs> uh, and then it's kind of, I, I'm kind of really shy. I, you, this may surprise you, but I was very shy during my first years um, in high school. And, yeah. uh, primary, I wouldn't even fucking go on stage. I'm too scared. Like, I was like, yeah, no, no, that, no. that was me as well. Was it? You saying- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I... I I loved the idea of doing it. Like, I knew I had the confidence in me. I just didn't show it. Like, I didn't want to do it with other people. Did you? I heard a rumour, I don't know if it's true, that my the lovely Cheryl, um, who was my judge, or judge on my X Factor, uh, has got a job in heart. Oh. So, I don't know how true that is. But apparently, apparently, she lives in Bucks to us, you know. Where? Apparently, she lives in Bucks. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh! If she's I don't want to be one of those creeps that's like, "Where's her house?" But like, I'm gonna bloody try and find out. <laughs> like, oh, Cheryl, because I, I got on really well with Cheryl. Actually, she's one of the very few judges that liked me and loved me and believed in me and brought and me she, back. As well. Wasn't she the one that got you back on the? Sh- did you? So did you get kicked out and then she brought you back? Yeah, yeah, got yeah. kicked out of judges' houses. Um, and that which then, is fake. I, I read that somewhere. Isn't it fake? It's not their actual house. Well, the house I went to, believe it or not, it was Simon's house. Oh, was it? Oh. Oh, my, I tell you what, I got out that fucking van and I, <laughs> I said to the, the, the researchers and runners, I said, is that Simon Cow's house? They went, yeah. I went, what? So wow. it, it was this big black gate. So I went through and then he's got like these fucking... Loads of cars, and I could you not, um, loads of cars on his drive. One of them was worth like 1.2 million. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I walked in, he's got a maid making food. He's got his dogs. He's got uh, his um, uh, wife, his fiance. Uh, and I Can you just it, take and- a second and realise that you've been to Simon Cowell's house? How crazy yeah. is that? Guess what? It was in LA as well. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Was that your first time there? Oh, my God, yeah. And I'll tell you what, what an experience yeah. in LA. I cannot tell you, like, how mad that was going over there as the final six of Simon's category, then getting kicked out. Then I thought, oh, fuck me. So, okay, I've done well. I got to judges houses. I get a bit of fame out of it, you know, and then all of a sudden... I get a message, a phone call, a uh, couple of long story short, saying, right, can um, can you come to London to say goodbye? And I was like, okay. Say goodbye? Right. Yeah, they wanted me to say, they want, uh, 
basically they wanted to say for all my hard work that I'd done oh, right. and all that, they wanted to say look thank you very much Stevie and of course little did I know that I walked in and that's when fucking Cheryl walked through and I was like what the f- what were you what doing here <laughs> Cheryl what are you doing here and then she sat me down and she said look you know as you know we've got we've got four wild cars this year and we get each judge gets to choose a wild card to bring back and I went oh, and then my mind, I just went, what, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. What is, what like, is it me, isn't it? It was kind of like a moment. And then she went, I chose you. Oh. Category. So for me, that moment, if it weren't for her and the producers and everyone else, and Simon did want me back, to be honest, because he actually did say, I didn't want to let you go. He actually yeah. fucking told me that. Um, <laughs> there's another exclusive. So, um there we go. I was brought back and that was it. So for me, me and Cheryl got a little bit of history, you know. <laughs> supported me and Chloe in the X Factor. Oh, sorry, in Big Brother as well. So there you go. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, ultimately people really bought into like you as a person, really, didn't they? I think so, and I hope so. And I think I hopefully I still think I'm sort of half decent geezer. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm human. I have my moments of being emotional you know i get fucking emotional and sad and angry and you know all i mean no, i really wanted you to cry during like can you just like fake cry? <laughs> <laughs> i was like let me try and make him tear up i want to be like a piers morgan <laughs> oh you make me cry i'll tell you what some i am a very emotional person but it has to take that certain like kind of touch my spot and then i'm like I start to, uh, my eyes start to well up and then I, I'm off, I'm off. Next gone. time, next time, I'll, I'll try and figure right. it out. But I have to say though, aside from you not making me cry, you've actually really made some great fucking questions, Hans. Really? Seriously. The, the questions were really quite, they're in depth and very, to get to know me really, um, if many people don't already. So they're very good questions that you've um, you gave me to answer. So thank you for oh, that. Oh, thank you. Because the thing is, like, obviously I wanted to speak about X Factor because I feel like everyone would want to hear something. But like, there's always, there's like Steve, I mean, I know that you say X Factor played a huge part like in your life, but like there's still a Stevie without the X Factor. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm just human, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm just me and it, I, I never change. I, I, I was in a bit of a, I was in a bit of a dark place many years ago. Uh, and I'll, I'll say that in my book one day. Um, I was in a really, really bad dark place where I just, oh, I, my head was just not, not concentrating on anything. Um, and one day I will, so I will mention that not, not yeah. for the fake heart tonight, but then kind of a few years later, I kind of, Start to feel good, you know. Yeah. I start to pick myself up and go, you know what? Okay, all it right. takes a lot because I've been there as well. It it takes so much energy, like, and people don't people think everything's fine, like they don't realize it. You can hide it so so well. Yeah, yeah what starts on are you? I'm Aquarius. Oh, interesting. Okay, I think you're quite you're, you're a bit like you're kind of a bit like me. You're a bit sensitive. You can be. But there's that kind of side to you where you've got this passion and you're like, you're very passionate and, 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 and you're all or nothing. Is that right? I'm, yeah. 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 I'm not going to say that, am I? <laughs> I'm going to be like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You are all or nothing. You, you wouldn't do anything fucking half assed a bit like me. Yeah. You, you, if you're not going to do it, you're not going to do it. And if you are going to do it, you're going to give it fucking yeah. 100% yeah. effort. Like, otherwise, you're just going to have bollocks. And that is you, right? That is you. Like, uh, same, you're, you're... Uh, same with people, actually. It's either I am I give my all to you, like, I'm, I'm friends with you, I'll do anything for you as a friend. Yeah. There's no in between. Yeah, yeah. It's either well, we're not well, friends or we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that. You are, you know, it's genuine and it's passion that what you love and do and that is I, I don't know I just sense that about you but there's also a sensitive side of, to you I, I feel a very but not many people see that not many I think I I'm know. quite good at having a poker face like I'm, I apparently I've been told I'm hard to read do people find you intimidating <laughs> do you know what it's funny that you asked that because people have said that 
and I myself say that about myself I mean I can it's not intimidating in the sense of I scare people away it's more like and people used to use the word mysterious a lot of people said that that I'm I was just hard to figure out and I wasn't easy to read in the sense of you you didn't know what I was thinking or feeling if you spoke to me and to me I mean it's a habit that I had growing up and now I use it more as a skill (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know if I'm out with the girls on the night out and someone's annoying us I'm usually the intimidating one or the one that will step up do you know what I mean so it is useful now but like growing up it was I think a habit that I use as a defense mechanism and that's why I am a little bit more serious um do you know what I I think you're a bit more kind of the laid back kind of person but you're you 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 know you're amazing at what you do, you know, you, you're you digging into my life kind of thing. But, yeah, that's the one thing with you. You're just, you're very, I don't know, you're you're, you're sensitive, but you're passionate and you're all or nothing kind of, kind of girl and you love what you do. That's all I can say about you, really, hon. Thank and you. And you're a great interviewer as well. There you go. Thanks. Thank you. Do you know what? It's already been an hour and a half. I mean, I've literally just realised. Okay, but... we are in it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was it like being on Oprah? Yeah, it's like bringing on a fucking Oprah Winfrey show kind of thing, like with, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the Megan McCann. Well, not Megan McCann. What the fucking Megan? Megan and Harry. What did you think about that? Oh, uh, I just, oh, I, I can have my views, but it might get me in trouble. It's the thing. <laughs> no, I'd, um, let me reverse that question. What do you think about it? I think. And be honest. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So I think Megan took a lot of the control of that interview. I didn't, I felt like Harry didn't cover up really well the fact that he, you kind of got that sense that he was just there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think I would have liked him to, to like just say a bit more. Like, otherwise it gives off the wrong impression. But I yeah. think with Megan, like, I wouldn't be surprised if what if, if the things that she said were true, but I also think that there's certain things with the royal family that you have like you have to realize that royal family as people is different to the establishment. Yeah, and like even yeah. as someone who's not in the royal family, we kind of know that. And I think yeah. someone who comes from outside of the UK, if you're going to marry someone from the royal family, you kind of have to expect certain yeah. things. You, saw- you know what I mean? And although it's wrong for it to happen in that way, it's also something that sometimes you just don't have control of. And I think that is the shock that she might have had. 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. You you know what you're getting in for. You yeah. Know, royalty for fuck's sake, you know. So, you know, you're going to become a millionaire straight away. Yeah. Literally. You know. Um, I think there was, I think it's fair enough. Like, I, and you can tell with Harry that he was always, you know, he always respected the, his family and his duties, but you could tell he was always the one, compared to William anyway, William was the one that took took it a bit more seriously if you know what I mean Harry wanted to live his life and like and I think that it I mean you can tell it has a lot to do with his mum and it's like it's so it's so sad isn't it no I like it I love it your honesty is brilliant yeah yeah yeah, I agree yeah I agree totally yeah but hey you know it is what it is I I just hope Harry's happy that's all I do yeah yeah that's the thing if if he's happy i mean he clearly would be happy i don't think he'd be he'd put his, himself in a situation where he isn't he's, yeah. he's got like this million multi do you know what, how much they're getting for a netflix series right about them 100 million 100 million quid for a netflix series and the disney stuff and like disney. even being on the oprah to be honest yeah but i did like yeah. megan yeah she's, she's beautiful you know yeah. um but if I'm honest, I do love I do love Harry. I think he's great. I do think he's he's this. I don't know. 
he's great. I mean, he's they're cute. both great. But yeah, he's just he's got it. You know, he's yeah. got it. So I wish him all the best. Yeah. Both of them, <laughs> if they know. see this, you know. Imagine. Oh, you know, if they watch this, bloody hell, fucking uh, even I would shit myself. I'd be like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> fucking what? Oh. Oh, you're off the fucking toilet. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird one, hon. It's a weird one, but yeah. hey, you know what? No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. Exactly. Just like X Factor. So, yeah, exactly. No one knows anyone's life until you actually get to know them personally. Personally. Then you go, shit, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Anyway, oh, yeah. But no, I've been I've enjoyed this interview, hon. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thanking you from my heart. Thank you. No, thank you for coming on, honestly. I thought you were great. The the questions for me were just, yeah, brilliant. Thank you. They Thanks. were great. So good choice of questions. You must have really fucking thought about it. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, you must have thought, right, I'm going to fucking ask this question because this will tell me <laughs> this about him and... It's brilliant. It was good the way you... No, I did. I, like, I just looked at, um, I looked at your Twitter... And I was disappointed when I found out you only joined a few years ago because I thought you'd have Twitter when you were on the X Factor. I literally got Twitter when I got on X Factor. Oh, right. They said to me, um, you've got to have Twitter, you've got to have this, this, and the other. So anyway, we'll get, they said to me, you, you'll get verified. And I started off with about 2,000 or 5,000 <laughs> followers. And then as the weeks went on, it grew and grew, and it, it got 80,000, um, 90,000, wow. 90,000. I was like, what the fuck? And I didn't know how to work it very well. Yeah. But then now I'm king of social media. I'm like, right, I'll put this out there. I'll share this. I'll do that. Do a video. I'll, I'll, I'll share my life. I'm king yeah. of it. But at the time, I didn't know how to fucking do it. I was like, actually, you know what? I'm still trying to get used to it now, to be honest. And I'm like 22. Twitter is hard because you have to yeah. really know what you're doing. Like, well, oh, fuck, how do you tweet? How do you, how do you tweet a celebrity? You know, it's one of them. It's like, yeah. you know, but I've, I've got to be careful. I, what I you t- wait, there was a name I put down. Where is it? Oh. Um, go on then, far away. It's Charlotte Flair to you. <laughs> oh, my God. I it was literally just tweets about her. <laughs> it's like, you've got an obsession. Do you know what? I fancy the... Oh, I'm going to put this right. I fancy the knickers off her. Right? Yeah. For me, I, I'm a big wrestling fan, right? I re- I used to do wrestling. I watch wrestling. I love oh. it. And, yeah, I know not many people know that. And I, I did. I trained to be a wrestler. Uh, but it fucking hurt. So, yeah. excuse me. <laughs> but, so I watched uh, Scarlett Fern now, and she's like, oh, my days. I'm like... Pfft. Has she ever I'm tweeted you back? She's always liked my tweets, but she's never tweeted me back. Right, so okay. She's liked my tweets, and I'm like, oh, my God, I've got, a, I've got a fucking Charlotte Fair like on my tweets. Oh, brilliant. But she's never tweeted me. She used to get engaged to someone, though. So, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. Oh, is she? Yeah, she oh, is. I didn't know that. You know, hey, she's beautiful. She's like my dream woman. Along with yeah. Holly Willoughby, they are my dream women. Holly Willoughby? Yeah, I love Hollywood. She's married, isn't she? With kids. With kids. Again. I know. You need to look but elsewhere, mate. <laughs> for me, I'm just sort of like, okay, if it comes, it comes. If not, I've got myself. You've got stuff board. going on. And that's it. But yeah. I'm happy. And this is the thing. Other than my dream I, I want to achieve, I'm happy, hun, quite mentally, physically. I'm all right, you know? And that's the thing. Be happy before you can make someone else happy. And you know what? Usually you end up finding someone when you're happy with yourself. That's the best Uh, way to do it. Yeah, yeah. If you're miserable and you're not ready and, you know, that's the thing. And how have people got into fucking relationships during the lockdown? How? How? I guess it's all app dating, online dating. That's what I think most people, you know, except me for me and that's that. And I'm happy with that. So, yeah, don't change who you are. Never, never. And you too as well. I mean, you've done so well anyway from like X Factor and stuff. Thank you, darling. I mean, it's not easy. Not that I know, but I'm guessing it's not easy. It's not easy, but you've got to keep going, you know. Don't give up on what you love and what you're good at and your passion. Don't give up. I even say it to my daughter, never give up. We've got a motto. 
never give up, never quit. That's my name, my daughter's summer. That's her name. Um, that's our motto. We don't quit. That's our saying together. So, you know, I won't quit. She won't quit. We just keep going, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, just. just and your <laughs> film, I can't wait to see your film. It better be good. Because if it's one of those shitty thrillers, I'm telling you now it's not going to go well. Oh, shit. Well, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. And your lines. Don't be too cheesy, but like. Don't be shit. <laughs> don't be shit, basically, yeah. <laughs> That's what people say to me. Don't be shit. All right, okay. Uh, in my <laughs> shit. Oh, fuck it. All right. Yeah, what a <laughs> No, that's mm. right. You. Don't be shit. Yeah. <laughs> now. You have to tell me now if I'm shit. <laughs> Listen, Otherwise, it's I, game over. I thought this interview was fucking amazing. Thank I've you. The past two hours, nearly. I know. I've talking to you. I've enjoyed the interview. Um, I've got to know you a, a little bit as well, yeah. you know, and I'm I'm really happy with how it's went. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Pleasure. I'll um I'll let you know. I'll message you. I'll keep keep you in touch. Yeah, make sure you do. I yeah. will do. Don't worry, I will do. <laughs>